The questions that I'll be answering here are all about a situation in which a stone is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second from a cliff that is 50 meters high. The first part of this problem is to find when the stone reaches the bottom of the cliff. To solve this, we'll use the equation final displacement equals initial displacement plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Putting in our values for this problem, we'll say that the origin is the cliff. So, the displacement when it reaches the ground is 50. And the cliff is the origin, so the initial displacement is zero, plus the given initial velocity of 10 times time plus one half of the acceleration, which is negative 10, because it's traveling in a negative direction due to gravity, times time squared. Turning this into a quadratic equation gives us zero equals negative five t squared plus 10 t minus 50. When we plug this in the quadratic equation, we get negative 10 plus minus the square root of 100 minus negative 1,000 all over negative 10. When we solve this, we find two values for t. First one, t equals negative 2.32, and the other is that t equals 4.32. Because time can never be negative, we know that this isn't the answer, so t must be 4.32 seconds. The next question that we'll be solving is, what speed does the stone have just before hitting the ground? To solve this, we'll use the equation final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The values for this equation are v, which we're solving for, equals 10 meters per second, which we're given, plus acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 10, times the time that we got in the last section, which is 4.5. Three, two. Simplifying, we have 10 plus negative 43.2, which gives 30, negative 33.2, and that's our answer. For the next part of the problem, we're trying to find the total distance traveled by the stone on its journey. We know that this distance is 50 but we don't know how far the stone is traveling from the origin back down to the origin. In order to find this, we'll split the distance in half because we know that at the vertex, the stone has a velocity of zero. In order to find how long this takes, we'll plug it into the equation final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We know that the velocity equals zero at the vertex and that the initial velocity is 10, and that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 10 times t. We put negative 10 on the other side of the equation, and that equals negative 10 t. Divide both sides by negative 10, and t equals 1. That's the time that it takes for the stone to travel from the origin to the vertex. Now that we know this, we can find out what the displacement of the stone is at the vertex using the equation. Final displacement equals initial displacement plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Now we're solving for displacement, so we'll leave x as a variable. We know the initial displacement is zero and that the initial velocity is 10 and that we're solving for the time after one second. We add in one half times the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 10, times one squared. Simplified, this gives x equals 10 plus negative 5, which simplifies to x equals 5. So you know that the distance that the stone travels from here to the vertex is 5, 
And logic says that as it travels back down, it travels the same distance. So we can put 5 here too. We know that this distance is 50. So the stone travels 60 meters in total. 